Hi everyone. So welcome to the live show today. Very much excited for having you on the party uh, on the part three of our discussion for value added tax uh, in principle of taxation and taxation at large. I see some of you joining. Give us a thumbs up when you join the video. That way we get more engagement on the video. And also remember to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed to the channel. And whatever questions you have, put them in the comment box for me or in the chat box. I'll be very much excited to answer any questions that you have for me. Uh, today, we want to look at a practice question in value added tax. So far, in the part one, two, and three, uh, in the part one and two, what we've been trying to do is to lay down the principles, state the various things that we need to understand in order for us to actually uh, know how the mechanisms of that works. And uh, in case you couldn't watch that or you missed that, I'm going to drop uh, uh, that video in the description. Uh, to this video and then let's see how uh, you can be able to watch that as well part one and two then you can now jump up to the uh, part three as we solve the questions and as we prepare for the exam so comment in the chat box any questions you have for me subjects you would want me to cover or topics sorry you would want me to cover from next week on the channel I would be uh, very excited to know the topics you want me to cover on the channel so that I can assist you better in order for you to prepare well for your examination. So, right, I see some of you joining the stream. Give us a thumbs up when you join the stream. That way we get more engagement on the video and YouTube will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. So consider to give us a thumbs up on the video. All right. Okay, so let's go into our discussions real quick. And then let me share my screen with you real quick as we go into the discussions today. Okay. All right. So we want to continue with our discussion on value added tax. And today, uh, look at the final principles and definitely uh, talk about a couple of questions real quick. Now, if you know somebody writing uh, taxation and someone needs this video, Comment in the chat box with the person on Facebook and then the person will get a notification or just share the video and then let the person uh, be able to join and watch the broadcast. Let's get some fluid and then we can actually get started. So above all things, we or among other things, we've discussed a couple of issues about uh, value added tax so far. We've discussed a couple of issues about value added tax so far. We've spoken about uh, who can pay VAT, uh, what are the thresholds of VAT, what is the mechanism of VAT, and all of those things. But remember, I kept uh, referring you to this particular pro forma that you see on your screen uh, here, this particular pro forma you see on your screen here, because this pro forma is uh, the holy grail for you to actually uh, solve questions concerning VAT, and we'll be looking at that in a moment. So we spoke about this and talked about how we do all of those workings, and we spoke about the mechanisms of VAT, that for every VAT registered business, they pay VAT, that is input VAT, and then they charge VAT, that is output VAT. Then at the end of the year, they are going to be filing their returns. And then they will be able to uh, remit the difference to the Ghana Revenue Authority if they charge more than they paid. And then if they paid more than they charge, then the difference would have to be reimbursed uh, by the tax authority. But definitely the tax authority is not going to be giving you anything. So what is going to be happening is that... Um, we are going to be carrying it forward to the next uh, month in that case. And uh, we discussed the types of supply. Yesterday, extensively, we spent our time 
on the various types of supply, uh, taxable supply, exempt supply. We look at the differences between the exempt supply and then the relief supply. Very, very important. We look at zero rated as well as the exempt supply. And then we came to the issue. So let me just scroll down, down to where we got to yesterday in my slide. We spoke about the registration, who can register, and the obligations for registration. So that was where we uh, ended uh, yesterday. And we want to touch on some few key principles, and then we will proceed with our discussion. Abdullahi, um, Abdi Rahman said, hi, Tita Ishira. Hello, Abdullahi. I hope you're doing well. If you have any questions, put it in the chat box. Uh, if you're on YouTube or put it in the comment box, if you're on Facebook, and I'll be able to bring your comments on the screen and we can look at it together and uh, be able to go through it. Give us a thumbs up on the video as well when you join uh, the stream. So let's go on with our discussions. And before we get into the computations, the calculation aspect, I want to talk about uh, some few things because uh, in as much as uh, you can register for the VAT, in as much as you can uh, actually apply to collect the VAT on behalf of the Ghana Remedy Authority, the Commissioner General, under certain circumstances, can cancel the registration or can deregister an agent. So there are a couple of uh, conditions that, when present, will cause the Commissioner General to cancel or deregister or, if you want, uh, suspend your registration at the end of the day. So let's look at that real quick in that case. So we say that the Commissioner General shall cancel, the Commissioner General shall cancel, the keyword there, cancel the registration of a taxable person where the Commissioner General is satisfied that, where the Commissioner General is satisfied that the person or the taxable person A no longer exists. Okay, no longer exists. So if it's an individual, maybe he's dead or he's late. If it is a company, the company has filed for bankruptcy or something like that, the company has been taken over by someone else, then it means it is not in existence. It is no longer carrying out taxable activities because remember we said, if you are dealing with exempt supplies, then you are not supposed to actually carry uh, register for VAT in the first place. So maybe earlier you were dealing with taxable supplies or you were undertaking taxable activities, but for some reasons now you are no longer uh, undertaking taxable activities. Based on that, the Commissioner General can stand on that and say, hey, let's just deregister you in that case. Three, it is not qualified or entitled to apply for VAT. So maybe there was an error. You applied for VAT or you registered to be a VAT agent, and for some reason, your registration was granted, but then later on, it was realized that mm -mm, the activities you undertake or the, the, the person or the business does not qualify to register, maybe because of the social factors, because of the administrative factors, or other factors as we discussed yesterday in that case. Then, has no fixed place of business or abode. That is very, very important. For some reason, maybe the business has been, uh, is not able to pay its rent for the period under consideration, so it has lost uh, uh, that permanent place of business, or the person is homeless. So for that reason, where are you going to undertake any business? So we cancel your registration. Then has not kept proper accounting records related to a business, a business activity carried on by that person. So remember, we said that when you apply to register for the VAT, the Commissioner General will satisfy. Until otherwise he realizes that you cannot keep proper books of account, he will not grant you uh, uh, the thing, the uh, permission to be a registered uh, VAT agent. So if the permission is granted, you have registered VAT agent, but for some reason you are not uh, keeping proper books of account, then the registration can be cancelled by the Commissioner General. And definitely the last one here is has not submitted regular and reliable tax returns required under this act. So definitely, you are supposed to submit tax returns, but for some reasons, 
it hasn't been regular or reliable as per the understanding of the commissioner general for that reason what is going to be happening is that your registration is going to be cancelled in that case so that is what you need to understand when it comes to uh cancellation of uh registration can it be cancelled yes and these are some of the circumstances under which a tax person's registration for VAT can be cancelled then we look at where the cancellation actually takes effect so let's look at it we say that the cancellation or a cancellation takes effect from the end of the tax period in which the registration is cancelled so it takes effect from the end of the uh from the end of the tax period in which the registration is cancelled so for instance if your tax uh, you are supposed to file tax 15th of every month okay 15th of every month and then the your tax was cancelled probably around uh 18th within that is uh 15th and 18th it was cancelled it means right to the next uh, time that you are supposed to file for your tax returns it will be uh cancelled there in that case so that is one thing you need to understand about how we deal with the issue in relation to when the cancellation actually take effect i hope you are getting the idea in relation to that so if there are any comments please put them in the chat box for me i'm going to be reading all of your comments and answer any questions that you may be having in relation to that so i see a comment coming from uh abdullah let's bring that on the screen it says what are tax returns okay in a simple language we say that a tax returns is a form that is filled with a tax authority okay that reports the income the expenses and everything relating to whatever earnings that you've made okay so that is what we mean by a tax return so it's actually a document that is going to be filing that will include your name your tax identification number the various income that you earned during the period under consideration whatever allowances that you are supposed to uh, have in that case so that is what we mean by the tax returns in relation to that so abdullah that is the answer to your question so let's build up now and then let's uh, go to a couple of other uh, things there finally is to talk about some special individuals who are required to file sorry to register for VAT irrespective of the threshold rule okay so despite the threshold rule the following shall apply for VAT despite the threshold rule number one a promoter of public entertainment number two an auctioneer number three a national regional local or authority or body which carries on any taxable activity shall also apply for registration so here irrespective of the threshold as far as you are into an entertainment you are a promoter of entertainment you are an auctioneer you're going to be answering things then there is a VAT component in that that has to be paid to the revenue authority in relation to that so these are also something that you need to understand in that case but remember yesterday i mentioned something very critical and it was that what is the benefit for registration what is the benefit for registration when we register to pay VAT, what do we stand to gain at the end of the day when we register to pay VAT, what do we stand to gain so let's discuss briefly about the benefits of registration so number one a VAT registered person has the benefit of getting back the input very critical the input credit on purchases made remember this at the end of the month if you are filing your VAT returns what is the mechanism you're going to be paying VAT you're going to be charging VAT then at the end of the month you are able to 
uh, if you paid more than you charge, you'll be writing off the difference will be carried forward. If you charge more than you pay, then the difference will be remitted to the revenue authority. So one of the benefits of registering for VAT is that the registered person will get back any input credit on the purchases that they made. So that is one key reason or benefit of registration. Two, access to interest-free short-term borrowing. This one is one controversial benefit like that. <laughs> it's an interest-free short-term borrowing. What do we mean by that? Now, according to the VAT, the VAT Act entitled a VAT registered trader to hold on the VAT collected within any given month up to the last working day of the month before paying it to the GRE, okay, to the Ghana Revenue Authority. All right? So what do we mean by that? Yes, if you are supposed to file a tax around 15, this is what we are saying here, but then you can hold on and then you file it at 30th or 31st of the year, of the month, sorry, of the month. What it means is that you're going to have two weeks of free short-term credit so that the money that you could have given to the revenue authority, you use it to quickly run your affairs, run your businesses in that case. But if you don't know and you, you exceed this, the revenue authority will come after you because that is a penalty we'll be looking at in a moment that you need to understand. Three, registration has the important, important advantage of making the registered business a more attractive supplier to other registered businesses. Why? Because registered businesses will have to buy from other registered businesses in order not to forgo their input credits. That is the thing. Because if you register and I register and I buy from you, you charge me, I'm also going to charge somebody. So at the end of the year, when I pay the back, it's not going to be an issue in relation to that. So that is also, it brings about a lot of uh, business opportunities and makes your business more attractive for similar organizations. Then the last thing is that because you know you're going to file your VAT returns, you're going to keep proper books of account. So the requirement to keep records at all of all sales and purchases, issuing invoices for the uh, sales and obtaining invoices for the purchases and submitting monthly returns to the GRA makes you to know that I need to keep what? Proper books of accounts. Okay, makes you to know that you need to keep proper books of account. Because remember, if you don't keep proper books of account, it means that you're not going to be uh, getting the right amount of VAT. Either you're going to be overpaying VAT and underpaying VAT. In either case, it is not a good thing for the organization. So because you know you are now a VAT registered agent, you're not going to be uh, keeping what? Proper books of account as an organization. So these are some benefits that we, we stand to gain when we register our business as a VAT business. Now, let's come to offenses and some penalties. I think I have a, a table here on that. Let's look at that one instead. So, some penalties and uh, some offenses and sanctions or penalties. There is a comprehensive system of penalty and interest payable for incorrect declaration of VAT, NHIL, and GET fund, late submission, late payment, and infringement of other things. So let's look at some of the offenses and some sanctions here. Please note that uh, as per specific scenarios, these figures here will change, okay? But for our academic purposes and for our exams purposes, these are some of the things we can talk about. So failure to register. So you are supposed to register. Obligatorily, you are supposed to register because you're a manufacturing company or something like that, and you fail to register. The sanction is that you're going to pay up to twice the amount of tax or taxable supplies until the application is filed. So let's say you were supposed to, or you have exceeded the threshold of 200,000 Ghana cities, and uh, you are supposed to have registered for VAT because of that, and then you've been there, you've been operating for some time. So what is going to be happening is that you're going to be paying what? Twice the amount of tax on the taxable supply. What does that mean? 
It means that let's say when you hit the 200,000 threshold, uh, you are supposed to register, but you didn't register. But then uh, you waited for about six months later or eight months later and you registered. So by then, now what happened is that your sales is around 750,000. Okay? What does that mean? It means that there is an excess of how much? 550,000 Ghana cities. All right? So what about the VAT on that times 12.5%? Let's see what we have. So 0 0.125 by 550,000. Boom. <laughs> that is 68,750 Ghana cities. Okay. 68,750 Ghana cities. 68,750. So because of your inability and your I don't know, for some reason, you did not register. You've made the Ghana Revenue Authority and by extension, the Ghana government to lose this sum of money. 68,750 Ghana cities. This money could have been received by the government to fund free SHS. This could have been received by the government to fund other infrastructure projects, one district, one factory, and whatever it is that the government wants to uh, undertake. Now, because you denied the government from this money, the assumption is that you're going to pay twice of the amount of tax payable. So let's multiply that by two. Boom. And that is 137,500 Ghana cities. So you're going to be paying 137,500 Ghana cities. But look at the thing here. You sold these goods and you did not charge the VAT when you were selling it to the people. So it means right now, this 137,500 is your sole responsibility. You are the one who is going to be carrying that solely. That is the sanction here. So, and, and it's quite scary. You get it? If your business is really huge and you're going to be paying such fines, it's quite scary. 137,500 Ghana cities, which you could have collected half of that from people you sold to so that you will be safe. But because you are stubborn, we're going to punish you for that. So that is the first thing that you look out for in that case. I see a comment from Abdul. Issa Abdul Haviz, he said, Haviz from Tamale. Great work, sir. Thank you very much, Haviz. Give us a thumbs up on the video when you join the stream on YouTube and on Facebook. That way we get more engagement on the video and YouTube will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. But most importantly, Please comment in the chat box or in the comment box uh, topics you would want me to cover from next week uh, on the live stream. And then let me know what questions again that you have for me. Probably you are studying something and you don't understand anything or you have, there is a certain treatment you don't get and you want some further clarity on them. Put all of them in the chat box or in the comment box. I'm going to be replying to all of them and assist you to be able to prepare well for your exams. Let's go to the second one. Two, offense. Failure to issue proper tax invoice. Failure to issue proper tax invoice. Here, you pay up to 1,200 plus the higher of 500 and triple of the amount of tax. That is also another thing. Failure to issue proper tax invoice. That is something there. Then, late filing of the VAT. Very critical there as well. That one, 500 Ghana cities plus an additional of 10 Ghana cities per day. 10 Ghana cities per day. That is going to come on you. And you got to pay that. Next one. Making a claim for a refund which you are not entitled to. Making a claim for a refund which you are not entitled to. That one, you, you're going to pay twice the original refund request plus interest. So for instance, uh, maybe you bought something and you thought that you will claim a tax deduction on that, then you, you make a claim that, hey, you want a refund from the Revenue Authority. They said, it's not possible. You said it's possible. Now, for wasting the Revenue Authority's time on the things, we're going to punish you. So you're going to pay twice of the original amount that you wanted as a refund plus interest. Can you imagine that? Plus interest. Then the next one, late payment of tax. 
you pay 125% of the Bank of Ghana monetary policy rate, compounded monthly and applied to the amount outstanding. So that is also uh, something that you need to understand there. Then some general penalties, that is uh, up to three times the amount of tax involved. So sometimes it depends on the issue involved, a couple of item, other items could be there in relation to it. So these are some offenses and some sanctions that you need to know about. Now to the la creme de la creme, one of the key areas, this is a technical aspect and make sure you get me here, withholding of VAT, withholding of VAT, withholding of VAT. And right after this, we're going to be solving a question in that. So when we say withholding of VAT, remember I've told you about this uh, yesterday. I think I told you about this yesterday, but we want to look at it. Okay, so let's go with Odin that. Okay, I see a question from I am that guy he said, hello, can ECG be input VAT? Yes, to some extent, businesses can claim. Uh, I would have to confirm that specifically for Ghana, but I think to some extent, businesses can uh, claim uh, tax on that. It depends. It depends. Because once you are a registered business, if you bought the uh, thing and they charge you VAT on it, you can claim any uh, 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 vast credit on that. You can claim a relief on that. So that is impossible. That will be part of your input VAT. Because you need the power to manufacture the product, to use the equipment, the facilities that you are using as an organization. So yes, that will be amounting to that. So we told him of VAT. The Commissioner General has appointed some persons as VAT withholding agents. Some persons as VAT withholding agents. That is very, very important. So there are certain people who have been appointed as VAT withholding agents. Now, these agents are required to withhold from payment for a standard rate of supply 7% of the taxable output for tax purposes. Listen to the principle here very well. I wanted to make sure you get a principle here very well. That is, the taxable value inclusive of NHIL and issue a VAT withholding credit. So if you remember your pro forma very well, let's go to the pro forma and let me tell you that. So remember the rate here is 7%. So let's scroll up in my slide. And then let's look at the pro forma I shared with you here. This is it. This is it. Remember, I told you this yesterday. So the 7% will be charged on the taxable value. That is the value of the goods plus NHIL plus the get fund levy. The total of that, the taxable value, that is where he will withhold 7% on that particular value. I hope you are getting the idea. 
This principle is very important in that case. So let's go back to our slide. So these registered persons shall withhold 7% on standard rated uh, supplies in that case. So registered businesses are generally required to submit monthly returns, and that will include a number of things here. And then uh, you look at that in that case. I've already discussed this with you, but look at it. So here, we see the value of the goods, okay? We bring in our NHIL 2.5%. We bring in our get fund levy 2.5%. We get a taxable value. So on that taxable value, we claim what? 7%. I hope you are getting the idea. On that taxable value, that is where you claim your 7%. So now we have finished with pra practically the principles and the rules. And we want to look at a couple of practical questions here and how we deal with them. Please follow me carefully here because this is where everything we've done will actually be put together in a reasonable way. Okay, in a reasonable way. Remember, I mentioned to you that my slide is from my uh, new advanced taxation book. So that is where I'm sharing uh, this information uh, from. So let's look at the first question we have there. And that is Pesicle, Pesicle, Pesicle. I see some of you guys joining. Comment in the chat box with any questions you have for me. Let me know the topics you would want us to cover uh, next week on the channel, both on Facebook as well as on YouTube. You can comment in the chat box any questions that you have for me, and I'll be able to get a notification and then bring your question on the screen so we can address it and look at it in much detail. So let's go. Question one. You good? Stay with me carefully. Percy Cool supplied goods to Perry Hot PLC. Both are VAT registered traders. Percy issued VAT invoice accordingly on 15th February 2019. On 20th February, that is after five days, Percy received a call from Perry indicating that he has lost the VAT invoice issued to him. The requirement is what should Percy do? So that is for three months. So what does the VAT law say about when there is, uh, you issue the VAT invoice and then the client, the customer comes back and say, I've misplaced it. What do you do? So this is what we have to do here. Now, the VAT law says that when we issue or when an entity issues a VAT invoice, okay? When an entity issues a VAT invoice, what is going to be happening here is that if within 30 days, the customer to whom the VAT invoice was issued comes back to say that he has misplaced the VAT invoice, then we can issue another VAT invoice indicating on it that this is a copied VAT invoice. So in this case, what should Percy do? Because they issued the invoice on 15th and just on 20th, uh, Perry is coming and saying that he has misplaced it. We will just, Percy will just issue another VAT invoice to him, only that it will be indicated on it that it is what? Copied. And that is very, very important. It will be indicated on it that this is a copied one because we've already issued uh, a VAT invoice to you in relation to that. Are you getting it? A VAT invoice to you in relation to that. So let me read to you uh what i have there as well so where well within 30 calendar days after the date of a supply a recipient who is a taxable person claims to have lost the original tax invoice for a taxable supply the taxable person making the supply is required to on receipt of a request in writing from the recipient provide a certified copy clearly marked copy very very important clearly marked 
copy, okay, to the recipient within 14 calendar days of receipt after the request. Are you getting it? So that is the thing that Perry, oh, sorry, Percy Limited can do in relation to this circumstance. So that is what we do when there is any scenario like that. So that is for three months. You write out the principle and then you go away. Benjamin upon some mentor said, uh, that is on YouTube, said, assuming I deal with granite and I use hotel, please, can I claim that input? Assuming I deal with granite and I use hotel, I don't understand. Benjamin, can you clarify your question? I don't understand the structure of your question. I don't know the point you are actually driving at. Uh, one thing we know is that uh, you can't claim VAT on entertainment, uh, hotel, and those things. You can't claim entertainment on that. But I don't understand the context of your question well. So if you can uh, rephrase your question so that it become clearer. Because you said you deal in granite and you use hotel. I don't understand what you are actually driving at. So clarify your points for me, and then I can provide you with a better answer. Now, let's look at this question here, and this is where the real deal is. So follow me on this question very well as we look at it in this case. Akofa uh, Vigne, sorry, Vignon, Akofa Vignon, an equipment hiring company, raises an invoice in the sum of 500,000 Ghana cities in respect of hiring of equipment services to a withholding VAT agent, okay, Sir James Enterprise. So get it well. Akofa Vignon rents or hires out equipment, okay, or hires equipment, rents equipment to people. And then Sir James Enterprise came and hired one of the equipment, okay, for whatever thing that he wants to do. But Sir James Enterprise is a VAT withholding agent. Get it well. It means that uh, Sir James Enterprise will withhold 7% on the amount that they are going to be paying to uh, Akofa Vignon Limited, inclusive of NHIL and then the Ghana uh, the Get Fund levy. I hope you are getting it. Let's build it on. This supply excludes, get a principle, this supply excludes. So we are told that the supply you are seeing, seeing here excludes the, the VAT, excludes NHIL, excludes the get fund levy as well. So it means that this is the value of the product. That is the raw value of the product, 500,000 Ghana cities. So we need to get the taxable value, then we get the VAT amount as well. Because if you remember your pro forma, we bring the value of the goods, we bring the get fund, we bring the NHIL, then we can now calculate the VAT on that taxable value. So let's see. Assume that this is the only supply of value added activity done by a coffer vignon in the period and payments are made in the same period required. A. A. Calculate the proportion of VAT that should be withheld by the agent in respect of the payment of the invoice. The withholding VAT rate is 7% because this is goods. Assuming it is services, we will withhold 7.5% uh, and we'll come to that in a moment. Please note, there is something here you have to understand. There is a difference between withholding VAT and withholding tax. Please get it well. A comfort vignon will be dealing with something about that. Okay? Because for the services, they will be withholding tax on their services. But the VAT also requires that when we sell to an organization that is a VAT withholding agent, they will also deduct the VAT aspect. So stay with me on this question very well as we unearth the principle about this. So A aspect of the question said, we should calculate the proportion of uh, VAT 
that should be withheld by the agent in respect of the payment of the invoice. And that is 3%. So let's go straight up to my presentation on that. So look at it. We have the value of the goods exclusive of VAT, 500,000. So we get 2.5% of the 500,000. That is the NHIL, 2.5%. That is the get fund levy. So 0.25, sorry, 0.025 by 500,000. That gives us 12,500. So national health insurance, 45, get fund, 125. We add that up and that gives us 25,000. So when we add the 25,000 to the value of the goods, we now get the gross amount exclusive of VAT, and that is what we call the taxable value. If you remember from our pro forma, that becomes the taxable value. So it is on this taxable value that we're going to be charging what? The VAT. It is on this same taxable value that St. James Enterprise would withhold the 7%. I hope you are getting the principle very well. So look at what is happening here. So I, proportion of VAT that should be withheld by the agent will be 7% of the taxable value. I hope you're getting the principle here. 7% of the taxable value. So that will be withheld. That will be withheld by Sir James. Because Sir James Enterprise is a VAT withholding agent. I hope you are getting the principle very well. Then, the II aspect of the question said, calculate the output VAT to be shown on the face of a coffers monthly VAT returns. So the first one was in the books of Sir James, how much you withhold. The second thing is, what will be the output VAT? In other words, how much VAT will a coffer charge uh, Sir John? Sir James, sorry, limited. So let's go there. Simple. The VAT that is going to be charging will be what? 12.5% of the taxable value, period. So that is your output VAT. 12% of the taxable value. Is it 12? 12.5%, 12 sorry. 12.5% of the taxable value. I hope you are getting the principle because that is what a, a coffer vignon will charge. Then let's move on. I, I, I. Calculate the VAT payable by a coffer if the total input VAT incurred for the period is 25,000. Calculate the VAT payable by a coffer if the total VAT incurred for the period is 25000 So let's go to III and look at how much VAT is going to be paying. So look at what is happening here. If you remember, he is charging an output VAT of 65625 which is 12.5% of the taxable value. Right? Then we bring in the input VAT. Remember, there is a VAT in CAD of 25,000 because that is what we are told that he is he in CAD. So when he was buying his goods, when he was buying the equipment, this was the VAT he in CAD, 25,000. Then the VAT withheld by the agent, 70% uh, on the taxable value, 36,750. That is also brought. So the two of that becomes a deduction for a coffer vignon so that that becomes his her input VAT. So we now take that from the output VAT he charge and now the VAT payable to the Ghana Revenue Authority is going to be 3,875 Ghana cities. I hope you are getting the principle so far. Very, very important. Please comment in the chat box if you have any questions for me comment in the chat box if there are any things that you don't understand because this is a real deal area that you must make sure you get a principle very well.
Right. So now, let's bring in perspective what has been done so far. We've calculated the taxable value. Okay, we've calculated the taxable value, which is 525. We have calculated the VAT will be withheld by the VAT withholding agents. We've calculated the output VAT that she's going to be charging. And then we've looked at how much VAT that is going to be payable by a Coffa Vignon. That is going to be payable by a Coffa Vignon. I think a Coffa is an airway like that, something like that, Vignon. <laughs> Ivy, Ivy, show the payment details by the withholding agent for the supply. <laughs> so you see that in this question, for 12 months, the examiner is trying to come from all angles. He came from the agent, he went to a coffer, he went to a coffer, then he is now coming back to the agent. So right now we've looked at how much VAT that is payable by a coffer vignon. But how much or what will be the payment details in the book of Sir James Enterprise, which is the VAT withholding agent? That is what the examiner is now asking us. So let's go to my slide on that real quick and stay with me and look at what is going on here. So in his returns, this is the value of the goods he bought. 500000 Remember, there will be VAT, NHIL, and get fund 2.5, 2.5. So that was 25,000. So that we got the taxable value here. Okay. So this was our taxable value to uh, 525,000 Ghana cities. Then there was a VAT component that Akofa Vignon charged. So that will be added so that we get the amount inclusive of VAT. So this becomes more or less like the tax invoice. If you remember our pro forma, this will become like the tax invoice. Okay? So the tax invoice is going to be the value of the goods plus NHIL plus get fund. We get a taxable value, charge the VAT, add it back to it, then we get a tax invoice. So that is the total tax invoice that he's going to be getting. But then, remember, he has withheld 7% of that, which is the VAT thing. So that will be taken into consideration in that case. Then, very, very important, and this is very tricky. Remember, he will withhold 7.5% for the services because a corporate video renders the services to him. So on the value of the service, which is 500,000 Ghana cities, Sir James will withhold 7.5% of that. Now, make sure you don't mix it up. There is a difference between the VAT, which is the 7% of the taxable value, and then the withholding tax, which is 7.5% of the value of the uh, services, of the value of the services. And that is very critical there. That is a very key principle that you need to understand in there. So we bring that up so that we get a total uh, taxes with health payable to the Ghana Revenue Authority. Then we will look at, so this is the invoice he's going to be getting from Akofa Vignon. Okay, so he's going to get this invoice from Akofa Vignon, but Remember, that is not what he will pay a coffer vignon. He will actually pay a coffer vignon this amount because he will be lessening the VAT withholding and lessening the withholding tax. So how much is payable to a coffer vignon is the taxable or the tax invoice less in the withholding tax. And remember, the withholding tax here are two components, two key components in here. The VAT withholding tax, okay, and the withholding, the service withholding tax. That's it. So this is now how much a coffer vignon will be receiving for the services that has been rendered. 
This is what you have to understand about value added tax. Any questions, please? Any questions? Let me know in the chat box. Let me know in the chat box if you get a principle very, very well. Let me know in the chat box if the, you get a principle very, very well. And then comment as well with any other questions that you have uh, for me. Remember to give us a thumbs up on the video when you join the stream. That way we get more engagement on the video and it helps the channel to grow. YouTube will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. So give us a thumbs up on the video and also share the video so that we can reach many students as well, right? Can reach many students as well. So put in the comment box any questions you have for me. Any questions you have for me. Now there is a B aspect of this question. So let's look at that B aspect of this question real quick. I'm going too much. Or C aspect rather. Let's look at it. And that'll be the final thing about it. Below are the various contracts awarded to KPP. What's that? Below is the contract awarded to KPP Boost and Stationery Limited by the Ghana Water Company for the year ended or for the year for the 2018 year of assessment for the 2018 year of assessment so these are various contracts these are various contracts first contract was for the supply of stationary costing 1800 now there's an exception rule about the withholding tax that you need to uh, understand when it comes to dealing with withholding tax on services now this is in uh, withholding tax exclusively but I included it in the slide, and because it's a build-up to this question, I just brought it up. So the, first, the requirement here is what amount of withholding tax is due to the Ghana Revenue Authority in the year 2018 from the Ghana Water Company? So remember, Ghana Water Company awarded three various contracts in the year 2018 to KPP Books and Stationery Limited. KPP Books and stationary limited. So the first contract is 1,000 Ghana cities, and that is in 2018. Second contract, 900 Ghana cities, no P. Third contract, also 900 Ghana cities. Now there is a, an exception to this rule here. So let's look at the presentation I did, uh, we have on that. So look at it. You see, even though, yes, we can withhold tax, there is a threshold that as far as the amount is below 2,000 Ghana cities, so at most it's below 2,000 Ghana cities, you cannot work with all tax. However, if in aggregate, so yes, the first contract, like in this example, the first contract is 1,000. It is below uh, the 2,000 threshold, so no tax will be withheld. It's below the 2,000. The second one is 900. Now, the 900 by itself is also below 1,000, below 2,000. So, again, we will not withhold any tax on that as well. I hope you are getting the treatment. We will not withhold tax as, as well on that. But then we need to look at the aggregates because they are all occurring in the same year of assessment. In the same year of assessment. So, when we look at the aggregate of the first and second, it is 1,009. Even the aggregate, it is still below the 2,000. So where they are, there will not be any withholding tax to be charged. So as far as it is below 2,000, you don't charge withholding tax, okay? But then if there are more than one uh, supplies or activities within the year of uh, under consideration, then even though individually they may not qualify, if aggregate they qualify, then you charge the VAT on the aggregate amount. And we'll come to that in a moment. The third contract is also 900. Again, 
I don't know. For some reason, it is like maybe they were dodging the vat or something like that or whatever it is. But, but you cannot dodge these things, okay? So the first one, thousand. You, we won't withhold anything. Second one, nine, man. We won't withhold anything. When we add the two up, it is thousand nine. We will still not withhold anything. But during the same year, there is a third contract of nine hundred. Now that nine hundred is still below the threshold of two thousand, so we will not withhold anything. But this is the sequel. When we add the three contracts up, thousand for the first one. 900 for the second one, 900 for the first one. That is 2,800. And like you see now, the 2,800 exceeds the threshold. So even though individually, within the same year of assessment, each of these contracts are below the 2,000 threshold and you are not supposed to pay or withhold tax on it. The Ghana, the Ghana uh, Water Company cannot withhold tax on it. When we add the three together, it is 2,800, and it now exceeds the VAT, sorry, the threshold. For that reason, now we can withhold tax on what? That's 2,800 using the applicable rate. Okay? And this place, 3% because goods, all right? Or, uh, or wealth in that case. And that is 3% of the cumulative amount. That is the 2,800, and you pay a tax of what 84 84 that is the thing you need to understand there so basically when we talk about value added tax these are the things that you need to understand uh it's been an interesting three-part series for value added tax this is uh a very uh, critical aspect of your syllabus that you need to understand because there are a lot of things in here that you need to understand when it comes to dealing with uh, value added tax. Uh, there are other issues that you may have to talk about like uh, VAT returns and all components of VAT returns. All those things you can uh, read them on your own. I trust that you'll be able to uh, read those things on your own in relation to that. So that is what you have to understand when we talk about value added tax. So any questions? For me real quick any questions for me real quick about value added tax any questions for me real quick and then let me also know what you would want us to cover uh from next week on the channel as we continue with our discussion towards the ica november 2020 examination let me know what other things you would want us to cover on the channel and then any questions on the VAT on the VAT if you are watching the playback also you can put any questions you have in the chat box I read all of your comments and I'll be replying to all of your comments in that case now remember that our uh, enrollment uh, to study under my mentorship at 325 Ghana cities per paper is still running and we'll be closing that uh, very soon. So you'll be able to study directly under my mentorship for the ICA November 2020 examination and be able to get access to our lecture videos, get access to uh, our ebooks, catalogs, our question kits, and join our weekly Zoom sessions uh, in that case. That way you'll be able to prepare well for the examination and get every assistance that you require in order for you to prepare for the exams. Jonah Comfort on YouTube said, good evening, please, I just joined. How can I get a full video? All lecture videos will be available on YouTube. So after the stream, you can watch the playback. And then the part one, part two, part three will also be available on the channel. I'm gonna put that uh, on the description uh, of this video, or you can also check the transition uh, playlist on the channel and you'll be able to get all the three part video so that video so that you can uh, watch them so comfort no need to freak out uh, once I end the stream you'll be able to watch the playback and also be able to study uh, as well then after that if you have any questions you can put it in the chat and I'll be very much excited to answer any questions for you 
Right, so any other questions for me real quick? So this week we focus on uh, two subjects basically. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, Tuesday we did uh, management accounting focusing on limiting factor analysis and throughput. Then Wednesday till today we looked at three parts series on value added tax and uh i hope that you are getting value on this channel so far because my objective is to be able to provide you with assistance that you need but one thing also is that many of you are requesting us to cover a couple of things or release a couple of content but we cannot release as much as we can because of time and other factors in relation to that so that is why we are bringing you this offer of 325 Ghana cities so that you will be able to enroll in our full course, get access to the full course and study directly under my mentorship for the ICA November 2020 examination. So maybe you want to go further, you want to get access to the full thing, you want to really get access to our full course catalog, get access to our ebooks, get access to our question kits, join our weekly Zoom sessions and study directly under my mentorship. Imagine how that is going to be and how I can assist you for you to prepare well for the examination. That is my goal. That is my objective. So you can call us 050-114-9296 and you can see the number as well uh, scrolling below uh, your screen. You can call or WhatsApp that line 050-114-9296. If you are outside Ghana, you add plus 233 to it. That is the country code and you'll be able to reach us out and you can study under my mentorship. So Jonah Comfort said, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. So thank you very much for joining the stream. It's always a pleasure coming your way and providing you with some assistance that you need in order for you to prepare well for your examination. So God willing, uh, next week, we're going to be continuing with our discussions. Monday to Friday, 4.30 p.m. or 16.30 GMT, I'll be coming your way on the live stream as we uh, prepare ourselves for the ICA November 2020 examination. Remember that we have eight more weeks to go, approximately uh, about eight more weeks to go for the ICA examination. So I would want you to make sure that uh, you uh, continue to study, continue to put in the efforts, continue to put in the work as you need in order for you to actually prepare well for your examination. So practice a lot of questions. I've recommended that you get the ICA question kits, ICA question bank, and uh, I will be able to uh, uh, solve a, lot, a couple of questions in that as well as we continue. Then we are also looking at the fact that if uh, the channel is able to get a lot of engagement from you guys, from the community, and the channel is able to uh, grow a, a bigger, then we could uh, hold some other sessions as well. Probably we could have two different sessions even in a day where one session will be solving questions and another session will be treating a topic or something like that. All of those things will be done if really we are getting more engagement on the channel and the channel is growing very well in relation to that. So uh, make it possible and then let's see how we can go about that. So Linda Ndako said, hi. Do you also do live presentation on IPSAS? Yes, we do live presentation in public sector. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can check the channel on YouTube and then you can uh, look at the channel playlist on YouTube and you'll be able to get the, uh, the playlist on IPSAS. I've covered a number of IPSAS so far, so you can check the playlist on the channel and be able to uh, watch those videos. So definitely we'll be covering that some of them as well in addition to what we have already covered then comfort is saying sir please i need clarification on the ghana tax system okay comfort what clarification do you need what clarification? i think the ghana tax system is actually a topic on its own that probably we would have to cover somewhere later on if we have uh, time on that or if we receive a lot of requests on it then definitely we'll take some time to cover it on the channel so uh Co jonah comfort if there is a way you can uh just let me know what clarification you need on the ghana tax system i could provide you with assistance on that uh right now on the live stream Okay, so 
that is it about that. Linda Ndako said, noted with thanks. Always a pleasure, Linda. Uh, so that is what you need to understand about it. Thank you very much for joining the stream. Um, like I said, we want to make sure that we provide you as many, uh, as much content as we can on the channel to help you to prepare well for the examination. In return, all we are asking for you is to make sure that you engage with the video, share the video with your colleagues. Let's uh, bring in uh, as many students as possible, share the video with others so we can bring more people in. Because this is, this is a community with over 450 uh, videos already on the channel, definitely covering various topics in various subjects. Whatever it is you might be looking for, I, have, I might have covered it already on the channel. So all you do is just check the channel playlist and then you'll be able to look at that in that case. Okay, Jonah Comfort, I think I'll recommend you to watch a video on my channel. Check the channel playlist title, uh, uh, Taxation and Fiscal Policy, I guess. And I think you will get, I have covered something under the Ghana tax system and then you will understand uh, what you are asking about uh, there in that case, because I think I've covered that already on the channel. Okay. Okay, I think you are clarifying something there. Let me see. Sir, please, I mean constitute the Ghana tax system. What constitutes the Ghana tax system? Now, when you say what constitutes the Ghana tax system, you are talking about uh, maybe the tax reforms, uh, talking about the various uh, laws, the various acts, and how the whole Ghana tax system actually works. Because the Ghana tax system actually works from various angles, and there are various tax laws uh, tax codes that actually comes in in relation to how the tax laws actually work in, in general. Because when we talk about the way government generates revenue, then that is how we are talking about the Ghana tax system. So definitely we will talk about the uh, income tax, we will talk about the uh, uh, property tax, the gift tax, all of these things are components, the payee, uh, VAT, the withholding tax, all these are things that constitute the Ghana tax system. But I, I th like I said, I have done a video on that on the channel, so you can check that out. I don't know if uh, uh, it's still available on the channel, but it should, it should be available on the channel. So you can check that out as well in that case. I don't know what books are you using in tax. You need to get uh, some books as well on, on tax so that it will help you to really uh, prepare well for the examination, right? So thank you very much for joining the stream. Always a pleasure coming your way, engaging with us and studying under my mentorship. So I will see you same time tomorrow, not tomorrow, <laughs> same time on Monday, 6, uh, 4.30 uh, p.m. or 16.30 GMT, and uh, we will be on the live stream. Follow me on Instagram because on Instagram, that is where you will get the meeting uh, details for uh, our discussion. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram. That way, when we post the day's meetings, discussion on the topic is to be talked about, if you something it relates to something you are doing, then you can uh, quickly uh, join the stream in that case. So you can follow me on Instagram at Inshira Premium, the same name you are seeing on YouTube as well as on Facebook, and you'll be able to get uh, directly that. So Linda Indako said, watching from Bethany, Namibia, this was helpful. Okay, then we are, I'm excited to hear that, Linda. Thank God it was helpful for you far in Namibia. Right. So thank you very much for joining the stream, and I'll see you same time on Monday. Remember, if there are any questions you have, any inquiries you have, you can reach us out 050-114-9296, 050-114-9296. The number is also scrolling below your screen and you can reach us out on that number. Outside Ghana, you add plus 2332 to the number. 
because that will be the country code and you will be able to reach us on that as well. So enjoy your weekend and take care of yourself and I'll see you on Monday as we continue with our discussion. Continue to study and stay blessed. Bye-bye.